Hello and welcome. This exciting episode is a sewing vlog and yeah, I make three dresses. Wow. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So in last week's sewing vlog, I showed you the blue dress, which I'd recently made, the vintage Butterick one from 1952. And I said, I love it, but I want to sort of mix it with, mush it together with the ruby dress, um, which is based on this Butterick one, double six, double seven. And I, uh, and this is the 1952 one. And I want to come up with dresses that um, I can pull over and just put them on and they don't have a zip at the side. They're really loose ones so um yeah I can uh put layers underneath in the colder months and just wear it just as a dress during the summer months and these are the two that I came up in that up with in that sewing vlog from last week this one is a six skirt uh, six panel skirt and um I also had to put a couple of inserts small inserts just in the side at the hips just because I got the um measurements slightly wrong with the forgetting all of the seam allowances and um yeah so i was going to make another one of that but with seven panels out of the pattern that i drafted and then this one i decided that the waist was too low so i was going to crop um that version has just two panels a front skirt and a back skirt so the first one i did was redoing the this one with the holly print and i made this brown one it's got green lining at the back so I call it the pistachio dress although when you just see the outside it looks like gingerbread so it kind of matches the um gingerbread jacket in the back there anyway so um with the between these two I fixed the collar so that that's good and um I didn't have enough to do full sleeves so they're quite small but the um the skirt instead of doing seven I just made another six one but instead of cutting out each six individual ones I sort of um, cut it on the fold so it's actually three panels that are twice as big and um but with a little bit extra so to make up for all the seam allowance so it's the perfect size but um, I, I still like the holly one more, even though it's got a few imperfections. Yeah, I really like the holly one. It might just be that, you know, it's brown and <laughs> that's not the most attractive colour. It's sort of a beigey wartime, World War II sort of, yeah, it looks like I should be driving an ambulance or something. But um, I don't know, they're kind of, they're the same. The skirts should be the same, but because they're the same you know, except the Holly one literally has three more seams, but width wise and everything, they're the same. But, um, yeah, I mean, the Holly one has bigger sleeves, but, um, yeah, there was same amount of fabric that I started with. And yeah, but I just prefer the Holly one. I mean, I like the brown one. I'd probably like it more if it was in a pattern. I don't think, yeah. I mean, I like it, but I think I'd like it more if it was in a Christmas print or a floral or um, foliage pattern. But um, yeah, so it's done. And those sleeves are just the cutest. Um, one thing I don't like about this. Oh, so now I pinned the skirts out and you, yeah, they are literally the same, but I just prefer the holly one so much more. I mean, I do like that this gingerbread dress matches the gingerbread jacket. Anyway, so after I did that, then I made this one. It's got baby slots on it. It is so cute. And the lining is made from and the sash belt and the cuffs on the sleeves are all made from this matching fabric. It's not matching really. It's a different type of cotton. It's a thinner cotton and it's got birds on it instead of sloths. But yeah, I am. Um, so this is the cactus one was from last week and I decided I wanted to crop it and it looks so much better cropped. Oh my goodness. So this is how I made the um, sloth one. So I cut out the all the bits and this is the two lining of the um, front and the two sloths are the actual front the outer front and that's the back there 
and I've also have a bird one for the back which is the lining so I sew the center seam on the front then here you can see I sew the front to the back of the bodice both outer and lining and now here I've sewed the lining to the um, outer bodice at the back and you clip the curves and then at the front when you do the lapels you um, sew them together and then I cut the corner and then I cut it again at a sharper angle so that that way you get the points of the um, and I also reinforce the pointy bit so it doesn't break through when you're turning it out and then um, with the leftover bits because um, this was slightly shorter than two yards I thought it was a full two yards but clearly it wasn't so um, in the cactus one I was able to use these um, off cuts of cutting the skirt out these triangle bits I sort of turned them upside down and used them as inserts to make the skirt fuller but for this sloth one these four triangle bits are all I had left to make the um to make the sleeves so they really cropped and also really puffy because it was a long bit and I used the bird stuff to make a cuff so it's going to be slightly longer but um yeah and uh so yeah and it matches the lapels so yeah now that the um so once that was sewn together I made my oh it was really difficult making these um sleeves but they turned out so cute actually they kind of look like little skulls so I was tempted to put two googly eyes on them but I didn't so anyway I um, sewed my triangles together down the center and then once I'd done that I put in a few pleats at the bottom so I do the center pleat and then I sort of um, fold, uh, do another pleat bet halfway between the center pleat and the underarm sleeve seam and then I do another one in between those two so I always leave the bit of the sleeve that faces the body I leave that clear and I just do all the pleating around the outside. So the five of the pleats are on the outside and there's none on the inside. And then um, once I'd done all the pleats, I folded them down and I attached the cuff. And then the next step was to do the top. And again, I just did five pleats on there, but they're slightly smaller. And then um, once I'd pushed them into place, um, well, see here, you can see the five of them. They're sort of pretty evenly spaced around. For the upper two thirds, the bit under the sleeve where the arm sort of rubs against the body, it's flat there. And um, yeah, so once I, if you, uh, once you've done it, you sort of have to do the pleats um, with the sleeve inside out but then to sew the sleeve onto the bodice you have to turn the whole thing in the correct way and um, yeah if you're not used to I'm used to working with tweeds so I'm used to turning things inside out that are incredibly delicate but if you're not just while it's still inside out just sew around it with the machine within the seam line and just so that everything stays together otherwise the pins will fall out as you try and turn it inside out but as I said I just turned it inside out and really carefully with the pin still on there then I pinned the um sleeves to the bodice I do one side at a time when they're really puffy sleeves because it's just so delicate and then once that was done it was time to sew the two bits of the skirt together once they were done it's time to sew the skirt well pin the skirt to the bodice and you sort of push the um lining bodice out of the way and yeah you have to sew around it twice to reinforce it and here they are it's so cute oh my goodness but um it looks terrible with the belt off but it looks absolutely adorable with the belt on. So I think if I'm doing a lot of, you know, moving a lot of stuff around, then I'd probably wear the cactus type dress that's, um, yeah, much freer. But this one is absolutely darling. It is so cute. Yeah, here it is without the belt, without the sashes. And I've literally just made dozens and dozens of sashes so I'll never be without one and I've got a couple of belts as well but yeah it's unflattering I I think I'd wear it around home just like this but um yeah 
probably wouldn't go out <laughs> without it sashed because, yeah, I'm female. So, of course, everyone will ask me if I'm pregnant. But, um, yeah, I think with sash, it just looks so super cute. And those sleeves, I they're literally four bits of four sort of triangle scraps. And, um, yeah, they turned out really well. This is the skirts. You can see here that if I'd had inserts, the, the skirt would be much, much fuller. I mean, yeah, so that is disappointing. It would have been even cuter if the skirt was fuller. But I'm, I don't know, I'm not too disappointed with it. It's really cute the way it is. And um, yeah, so I put the sashes back on to them. I think they're both cute. They're both really, really nice. And um, yeah, I definitely wear both of them. But um, as for trying to figure out which one I like the most, I couldn't really figure it out. I, so I went and made another dress. Oh, if you're new, I'm, I'm trying to use up my whole stash of fabric this year. And each month I've sort of allotted certain colours. So pale blue and beige are this month. So these are all the fabrics I still have to use up. I've got two more vintage dresses to make. So that's two bits of fabric. But the rest of them, I'm trying to find dresses that I want to make multiples of so that I can just make them up. So hence I made used up this. I could have, I should have used one of them to do the mock-up. Anyway, um, I used this Halloween fabric. It's, um, I bought it after Halloween. They had a bunch of clearance um, Halloween fabric. So I got this green one because green's my favorite color. And I love this. I made a circle skirt. You know how you cut a square of fabric by folding it into a triangle and then you um, sort of fold it into a triangle and a triangle again. And then you sort of cut a, a round bit at the bottom for the bottom of the skirt and you cut a little hole at the top to, and you um, sew a couple of those together. Well, I sewed two of them together and that's how I made this skirt. And I used the other yard to make the bodice and the sleeves. And um, I really like this. It's so cute. It's super cute. It's a little bit shorter than the um, ruby dresses. So, but I mean, that's not too bad. You don't always want to wear this you know, a super long dress. And um, yeah. So it's kind of like the sloth dress, but with a few tweaks. And yeah, I think it's really, really adorable. And um, yeah, so I use this, um, the green Sally Kelly fabric sash to um, tie it up with because I didn't have enough to make a sash. But see, yeah, this bit in the middle of the front of the bodice is really annoying me how it's got the I mean even on this sloth dress which is pattern matched really well in my opinion I still it really annoys me that there's a seam right in the center of the front so I'm thinking maybe I'll do another ruby dress but instead of doing tiers of fabric um I'll do a circle skirt like the this green Halloween has this skir circle skirt. I'll do that and just a plain top for uh, on it, if you get what I mean. So I think I will do that as a way to use up all the um, pale blue and beige. Or maybe I'll keep a couple of them aside in case I come across another vintage pattern that would look really really good in one of those colors but yeah um because I love the lapels but I don't love the center front seam so I think I will make a couple of more of these dresses but um just not now maybe in a few months time I've got all the pattern pieces and I've documented which ones made which and what tweaks I needed to make so yeah all in all, I think it was pretty successful. I absolutely love the holly dress. The brown one, I think if I wore that with a br like an old-fashioned brown belt and brown shoes, that would look absolutely adorable. The cactus one, yep, absolutely love that with a green belt or a white belt. It looks so cute. And the sloth, baby sloth one, oh my gosh, that is adorable. It is it is just so cute. And the green Halloween one, surprisingly adorable. Well, I chose to make it because I thought it would look cute. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's delightful. I love it. 
Considering it was just clearance Halloween fabric, I just think it is so adorable and one I'm going to wear a lot. And yeah, so I think um, I've got plenty of new drafted patterns now that I can work with in the future to go through and get through all my stash. But next up, I'll be making some commercial patterns. I think I've got time to make two more commercial vintage patterns this um this month and maybe one more tweed jacket and then yeah that'll be the end of the month goodness me and um yeah oh I'm exhausted just thinking about it anyway thank you very much for watching and um I hope you've been inspired to go into your fabric stash and use it all up making gorgeous dresses and um oh I really love that holly dress so much it's, I think it's my favourite. That and the green Halloween one, actually, but I like them all. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you later.